You're about to listen to a very open, honest and respectful conversation between me and my ex. A backstory about him. He's very successful, earns north of £200,000 a year. He's a serial Lothario as of present day. So he's still very much single, still very much looking. But he's a serial at shower, so you have to be a certain kind of babe for him to agree. Which is weird to me because he's dated a lot of girls who are, I think are perfect for him. But some people you have to pray over their life, you know, because you have to pray against the forces that are keeping them single. Anyways, I hope you enjoy the conversation. Tell me what you think in the comment section below. And yeah, I'll see you on the other side. James, can you talk? <laughs> yeah, because the wig I'm wearing is not nice. No, but I'm... um. You know how you said you, I you know how I said I wanted you on my video and you said oh no you don't want to go on my TikTok so I've decided I'll record the conversation and blur your face out. Do you, is that better? Yeah. Uh, blow my face out. Yeah. I need to I need to, I need to modulate my voice. But why did no? I, need to know I can I can find a software that. I don't know. I'll, I'll figure out how to, to tweak it a bit. But the, the context of this call is how to stay friends with your ex, even when it doesn't work out. Because I feel like so many people, when it doesn't work out, yes, they're heartbroken. It's natural, you know. But when they like, they get through the heartbreak and they just figure out this is the best thing that happened, that these two people aren't together romantically, but there's so many elements to the friendship and just the, the relationship that was non-sexual that you don't want to throw away. So yeah. how, for, for you, how is it being friends with me, even though I'm married, I'm respecting, when, when did we even break up? And I'm go follow your train of thought, like, yeah, and no, 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 no. I realize oh, this boy is talking about science. No, but I'm just saying, like, is because this is going to be so controversial, and I know a lot of people are going to come for me in the comments, like, oh, no, but if the ex is toxic, da, 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 for your own mental health, it's good to walk away. And very true, all those points are still very valid, but I feel like there's so many friendships that could still be cultivated when two people decide that they don't want to be together anymore. Because I feel like all the things I've gained from you... Actually, what have you gained from me from still being my friend? Because I know what I gained from you. Oh, okay. So, if I, for instance, I know that if I knew the point I'm being solved right now, mm -hmm. you know, I, I know there's... I know one resourceful, uh, one resourceful person that I could speak to and could find, I could find a problem, and that is absolutely you. Oh, I feel like with you, I have such a... There's such a rawness there. Like, I'm not pretending to be who I'm not. Like, I'm not, I'm not censored. I'm not, like, as much as I love my husband, but I just feel like I can't say everything because if I say everything, he's going to say this girl, the Chris. Do you get yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so even though, like, I'm fully committed to him, there's still an element of, like, I still have to be this, how do I say it? This, um, 
I, I still have to be this onion that he still has to keep peeling off every day to keep the relationship fresh. You get, but with you, like, you don't, you don't, Chris. I don't, Chris. Like, speak for about 10 months to a year and you might remember you kept emailing, emailing me texting me all the stuff just to say that so that we could still have some kind of friendship but i wasn't ready to have that friendship with you because obviously you said you weren't ready to get married you were just not in the right space yet and as much as that hurt it was probably the best advice you ever gave me because when i confided in mummy and i said oh um james said that he's not going to be ready in a very long time and she was just like this boy loves you because if he doesn't love you he will drag it on and you will waste your life hoping and waiting and waiting and waiting. At least he's already said, do you understand, like, bruh, like, everything is fine, but I'm just not ready to give you what you want. And just that, it takes a lot of maturity to come to that acknowledgement, like, that is really honest, because some people will not say it, they're scared. Yeah, I do, I do. It, it was very difficult, but I was like, I, it was very difficult, but I, I was like, it's okay, 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 it's I won't be, what can I put like, I feel like every, every day I'll have to be lying to you. Mm-hmm. I have to find this. Mm-hmm. That's the issue. Mm-hmm. I don't mind every day lying to you. It's knowing that I love you. Knowing that, okay, our children. But meanwhile, yeah, you have not <laughs> Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah, so I'm like, okay, no, I can keep lying to you. So, like, yeah. I even have a friend. I, I don't want to say her name. But I have a friend who... Um, I don't want to say her name for TikTok people, but I can tell you her name like, offline. So. But she, she was with this guy for seven years. And it was only after... She was with this guy, I was single. She was with this guy, I met Matt. She was with this guy, I got engaged. She was with this guy, I'm pregnant. And it was at my traditional wedding that she went home and rang her boyfriend and said, where are we going? Because they... No, no, even say that she rang, because she went back to to stay with her parents. I have to cut this bit out because there's too, too much information about this person. But anyway, it's quite long story short. She asked the guy, where are we going? It's been seven years. And he said, I can't marry you because you don't like riding bicycles. I want my wife to be able to cycle with me in the morning. Seven years. It took her to... These are real conversations. She's Asian and he's only... Like, these are real, real conversations. And he said, I'm not ready to marry you. And I don't see myself being married to you because I want my family and I to wake up in the morning and ride, cycle around Hampton Court Palace, all this stuff. And she was like, but why didn't you tell me that two years in? Three years in, four years in, five. He was like, yeah, you do my laundry, you cook, you're a great girlfriend, but you're just not who I want to be married to. So, like, some men are very wicked. Oh, seven good years. Seven good years. <laughs> wow. They pay rent together. They holiday together. She's met his family. He's met her family. She's waiting, hoping one day, one day, one day. He didn't do it. So she's gone to my own event now. She's bold enough. She just asked him, and he's like, I, "You're not my spec, you know." Seven good years. It's a wow. real, these are real conversations, no, that's, you know. No, that's, not, that's, that's what I'm saying. So that's some men. It, it, and his business is actually very shallow because if he has spoken to her that this is a deep breaker. It's not a big deal to learn to ride a bicycle. No, but she's not interested in sports. It's not her. It's not her thing. He's into like. If, if, if she could have stayed with someone for seven years, learning what they call breaking a principle on a single on a single dimension, it's something she could possibly do. No, but obviously you and I can read between the lines and know that that's a lie. He's not. It's not the the cycling thing. That's it. He had. He literally. He's got it made. Everything is comfortable. It's cushy. He's in a comfortable coven. He's enjoying all the specs, all the lovely, all the lovely things that she's provided. She's cooks fantastic meals. She does laundry. She cleans the house. She pays half the rent. Like she's doing everything, 
but he just knows that this is not the woman I want to be my wife. So I'm back to the point about mommy saying that you must really, really care for me to say that I don't want to be married anytime soon. Do you understand? So it's like just that having that honesty, having that transparency, knowing full of well that that comment will mean I'm going to say bye. It's done. Like we're, we're over. Or I'm not deluding myself to think that I'm going to change your mind because... You just can't change someone's mind when they've made up their mind that this is not what they want. And you also don't want to look like you're forcing someone to do it. And then you'll wake up one morning and be like, why am I even here? Like, Jesus. You know? Yeah. yeah. Wow. I, I'm sorry for your friend. <laughs> I mean, no, I, I'm, I'm glad that she knows and she's kept it moving. Because what would be worse if she's waiting there and then she can't have kids anymore and then... You know, she's saying goodbye to all the men who could potentially be her husband because she's so faithful to this guy who has no intention to be her husband. So I'm happy it happened like that because sometimes when you pull the band-aid off, you just got to let the, the wound, see that the wound is getting bigger and bigger, you know? But neither here nor there, back to you. So back to like our friendship. Is it weird for you or is this like a natural occurrence? Because I'm friends with all my exes. So I will say most of my ex exes, except one or two, mm -hmm. I think I'm friends as well. Mm -hmm. You know, except one or two, yeah. So I think I'm friends. I think I'm, yeah, very easy. Like, like, because I think for me, you know, like I try to like have that, you know, this kind of like, you know, uh, it's not just about the sex for me, basically. Mm -hmm. So there is like a few of there's always like. Uh, you know, like companionship, friendship, you know, all of these ambition, you know, all mm -hmm. of these mm -hmm. Fam, it's the ambition for me. I feel like that's the one thing that you're like a match and I'm like the um, matchstick. And it's like, that. that's another beautiful reason why our marriage would never have worked because we're too ambitious that someone has to, how do you say it? Like someone has to take the back seat, let the other person grow, then the other person takes the back seat. Later. But I think you and I, we're, we're too hard-headed and we were too hungry <laughs> yeah we're too, yeah it would have been disastrous yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So, yeah so i think in, because uh, so because of that yeah, i still find easy to like you know they say that uh, what's they call iron iron sharpened iron mm. so for me it's mm. for me to spread with people like that because mm. you know that fire keeps the bony whenever i talk to them you know? mm -hmm, so for mm -hmm. me that really makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. to speak to be to stay with my ex because mm -hmm. like I said I'm not being selfish but that's I, I was thinking I'm getting something from this you know that kind of facts so, facts so, yeah. it's like even with with my husband he's not friends with any of his exes he doesn't understand when I say that I'm friends with my exes because he's like oh we've, we've cut that bridge we've burnt the bridge everybody's kept it moving and stuff like that and I'm just like no but I can't explain to him why like i tried but he's just not phantom he's like no a man can never be friends with a woman he must always have sexual thoughts about her. and i'm like not really no because if you've already smashed so you already know what the sex is like and like if if you've already like healed and you're having better sex and, and, and more sex with other people then you're not really it's not and sex is not everything for a woman that's what most people don't realize that like, we need so much more that this we just need it's like a trifle that there's so many layers to it and when you take away the physicality you like you have to stimulate our minds like if you're an epicurean and like there's so much that we have in common and how we bond and if we just take the sex aspect away from it it's still very healthy it's still i don't even understand why people can be in sexless marriages for a long time i get it because if you can like pleasure yourself and the other person provides as much as what they can provide in regards to like intellectually like financially, like emotionally, then, you know, obviously no one aspires for that because nobody wants to be, you know, in a sexless marriage. But sex is important, but it's not everything. It's like... Yeah. 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 I, would, I think, I don't know, I've never married before, but I don't know, maybe the question I need to ask my current, you know, like, but I feel like every, every couple has got the point where the sex is not, no, it's not as, as frequent as it was mm -hmm. when you guys first the first year of marriage. Mm -hmm. I think it's something that I, I assume needs to like ask like depreciate like not like the, I don't know. It, of course there'll be of course there are moments where you guys be into it, but I feel like there'll be times where for like two weeks you guys don't know. I, I think I think I can't relate to that, but I think 
speaking to like like our princess and stuff like that, I think when you have kids, especially more than one, then maybe some people I can't speak for other people, but based on what she said to me, when you have kids, it kind of it goes down on the list a little bit because by the time you do piano run, swimming run, karate, kumon, explore learning, all the things, and then he goes to work and you go to work and you tie it out, like it's not every day, it's not three yeah, times a day, yeah, yeah three yeah. times a week, it's not realistic, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, 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 absolutely. Can just keep rising or you know it just is flat. It's, it's not possible. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Not possible. And like I remember when I spoke to um, uh, my brothers, Dwayne and Joseph, and. Um, I was like, oh, James and I, we decided it's not going to work. Blah, blah, blah. And when I said everything, all in the entirety of it, they were just like, yeah, the reason why he's not ready to be married is because you're not his dream girl. That if you were his dream girl, no matter what the, the excuse he said in regards to, oh, career and ambition and blah, 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 blah. If you're his dream girl, he would shelf all of that. I know that I don't want this woman. I don't want to let this woman go. Like as much as he might love you and the, like you guys are solid friends and stuff. If you were his dream girl, he would never let you go. And I think that really resonated with me. And it made it gave me so much peace. Like, if you were my dream guy, I would have fought and said, I'm not going anywhere. Married or no married, I'm staying. But then I realised that you're not my dream guy and I'm not your dream girl. So that's why it's easy for us to part, be rational, be logical, but still maintain the friendship. Because we know that this is what we can provide for each other. But there's so much more stuff lacking than what we're looking for. And... We're okay with that because if this person ticks 100% out of 100% of your boxes, you're not going to let this person go. And I didn't do that for you and you didn't do that for me. So even though it was hurtful, I didn't speak to you for about 10 months. I think when I woke up and I just made my peace with it, it was like, yo, I can reply to your emails now. Like, I can actually send you happy birthday again. I can, do you understand, meet up with you, invite you around to birthday parties, come to the wedding, all this stuff because... Do you understand? We're cool. Yeah, and it takes a lot. I, I feel it takes a lot for people to get there. I feel like most people can never get there because it's... I don't know. I don't know. I, I, don't, I, don't know. I, really, I, I think some people, you know, so if we just have a... I mean, it's, it's, it has to do, you know, when it comes to, like... Uh, just like this, basically it goes to romance. It's never, a, it's never that so simple. Mm -hmm. People have personality, people have uh, past stories, people have you know, experiences, and mm -hmm. kind of shapes the uh, present and the way they think of the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for some people, it could be as simple as they judge, they just have this principle that okay, when something is in your past and is your ex, you just mm -hmm. keep it away. Mm -hmm. it, it, that way. You know, like it's, it doesn't even matter if that person knows the key. To their success, it doesn't mm -hmm. really matter. Mm -hmm. You know, they believe the past and let it stay in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Some people, it's quite easy. It's like, it's okay. It's it's in the past, and it's in the past. It doesn't affect whatever is man. You know. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, like you said, some people they can't just uh, what's it called? They can't just uh, what's it called? Taking that, you know, that seeing that talking to that person, hearing that person's voice. You know, mm -hmm. and it, for the people they find it very difficult to like. You know, emotionally, see things as in the as in the past. For them, everything connects together mm -hmm, like where mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. different uh, people, different uh, experiences, different uh, what's it called uh, endurance when it comes to emotion and stuff mm -hmm, like that. So, mm -hmm, and it's a spectrum. That's what the issue is. All of these things are, are a spectrum. Mm -hmm. And by the time you put them together, you have more variability that you can never, never even predict. So mm -hmm, that's what mm -hmm. makes Romance very interesting because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. nothing is ever simple. Nothing is ever simple. So okay. yeah, so I don't think they continue people's. Uh, I don't think they continue people's uh, ideology about how they relate to their ex. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, you can. And there are some exes where they actually have to cut because really they were. They are very sexually attra attracted to that person. Mm -hmm. You know that if this person, if they see this person, even though they are married to husband, mm -hmm. and they say come over and they care over, they know that something will happen. So yeah, like, well, people like that are sick in the head because if you can say yes to one human being, but you're still yeah. hooked on another human being, then there's something psychological wrong with you because you don't have to get married if you're still like yearning for someone else. If you're still yearning for someone else, date other people, but don't commit your life 
legally and, and the thing is marriage is the single most legal thing you ever do in your whole life so you're gonna literally sign on the dotted line for another human being knowing fully well that your heart is still with someone else that, for me that's just insane it's insanity yeah but it's not matter is that you know marriage means different things to different people mm-hmm. for some people mm-hmm. it's big books exercise yeah mm-hmm. I like them that because right now because they're compromised mentally mm-hmm. that they should not take that box it's going to be very, very oh, what's it called it's going to be very difficult to sell that to them. So, yes, I think they may even know the father. Okay, and some, they can't just help it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the thing. This of the heart is very difficult. To very explain. difficult. Very, very, <laughs> very difficult. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's not like they, too, they don't want to like, take away that feeling, that deep uh, sexual desires to that person. It's mm-hmm. just the same reason where you hear about some ladies that... Uh, you know, when I worked them? with when I worked with women who were going through domestic violence, I saw this article and it said they don't leave until like the sixty seventh punch. Like until he's beating you sixty seven times. That's when you connect to your medulla oblongata and you'll be like, It's time to leave. So you're right, it's there's so many levels and layers to it. Emotions yeah. are just so fickle, yeah. Very yeah, true. That's, that's what the issue is. So yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's just what it is on that on that aspect. Yeah. So that aside, how you feeling though? Are you are you able to like start running, start working out? Wait, let me let me end the call, end the voice recording and then we can just have normal conversation. I hope you enjoyed that. If you watch all the way to the end, thank you. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.